All right, now let's go further and now look at a linear equation of a plane. So by collecting the terms in this scalar equation of the plane, we could rewrite the equation of a plane as follows, and it also will look uh, something like this, how we simplified it here. So if we go back to this plane equation, so write this out, then we could simplify it and then collect all of the constant terms, so such as this a, x naught, b, and then uh, this b naught, when they multiplied uh, with each other. Yes, yeah, so we separate all those, and what we're gonna get is, well, so let's, let's just start collecting the terms. Let's just write down the scalar equation first. So x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c, and then let's erase this. Plus C, and then uh, this is going to be uh, Z minus Z naught. This equals to zero. And yeah, multiply this all inside. So what we're going to do is, yeah, let's just multiply it all out. It's going to be AX minus AX naught, and then plus BY, uh, BY naught, and then uh, erase this. All right, it's going to be plus C uh, times Z times C Z naught. This equals to zero. So we're going to collect all the like terms, move all the positive stuff, all the, uh, the variables uh, Y, Z all together. So that's just going to be equals to A X plus B Y plus C Z. And the next one's going to be, now we're just going to combine all these. I'm going to take out the negative as well. Take out the negative, and we're going to have AX naught plus BY naught plus CZ naught. This equals zero. And then specify this uh, the, this term right here, this whole thing, this negative including. We call this D. So then that means we could write this as a linear equation. We'll call this a linear equation. But this equation of a plane is going to be AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals to zero. There's our linear equation of a plane, and this is going to be where, again, d for completeness is just, just going to be equals to negative um, a x naught plus b y naught plus c z naught, like that. All right, so going further, yeah, so this uh, equation, this is called, uh, yeah, the above equation is called a linear equation in x, y, and z. So conversely, it could be shown that if a, b, and c are all not zero, then the linear equation represents a plane with normal vector a, b, c, and this says, uh, yeah, see exercise one at the end of the video. And basically it's saying, yeah, it's saying prove that this is equation of a plane starting from here or something, yeah. And uh, it, it's pretty straightforward, you can just go backwards. And uh, yeah, you can go backwards but without, without needing to input this whole setup here. Just with this d value here, and I'll show that and exercise one at the end of the video. Anyways, let's go further. So let's take a look at example five. And this one states, find an equation of the plane that passes through the points P with coordinates one, three, two, and Q with coordinates three, negative one, and six, and R with coordinates five, two, zero. And, the, and then, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and look at the solution right here. So we need an equation of the plane to pass through these three points. So the vectors a, b, uh, yeah, let's, let's call the vectors a and b corresponding to p, q. So we'll do the position vector from yeah, p to q, and then p, r. So going from p, this one, and then this p to the r one uh, is, and we again, we just subtract uh, the components of each one. So a is going to equal 2, so q terms, the q terms minus the p terms. Uh, this equals to, I'll just write this fully, so A equals to PQ vector, or the position vector parallel to this one, and that's going to be PQ is going to be 3 minus 1, and then it's going to be negative 1 minus 3, then it's going to be 6 minus 2, like this, and this equals to 2, negative 4, and then 4, like that. And then box that in, and then uh, continuing further, the next one's going to be b. This equals to p r. This equals to um, r is just five minus one, and then this can be two minus three, 
and then it's going to be 0 minus 2. And this equals 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2, like that. All right, so that's the two vectors, like that. All right, so now since both a and b vectors lie in the plane, because we're told that uh, yeah, the equation passed through the, all these points, so the vectors that associated with them are all on the plane, so then that means their cross product, a cross b, and again, here's a link to my earlier video on it, is orthogonal or perpendicular to the plane and can be taken as the normal vector. Yes, yeah, so the cross product gives a perpendicular vector of two uh, of two vectors. So that means, and if we write this in determinate form, so we have uh, n uh, normal vector n equals two a vector, yeah, a vector cross b vector. This equals to write this in determinate form. It's going to be uh, let's write this out the big table there. So I, 2, 4, uh, I mean, yeah, the A is going to be right here, 2, four, two negative 4, 4, like that. And this is going to be J, be K. And then this next one is 4, negative 1, 2. So put the vectors uh, in, in rows, I mean, in columns, like this. Yeah, so each row, each row is a vector. So this, this vector, and then this one here. So negative 1, negative 1, negative 2 right here. Oops. Yeah, negative two like that. And then do this. All right. So uh, if we take the cross product here, if we remember, what we'll do is cross out this, cross out this to get the i terms, or this is in standard basis vector form. So we're going to have, well, this negative four times negative two, that's going to be positive eight. Then we're going to subtract four times negative one. That becomes well, uh, minus becomes plus, so it's be plus four. And this is the i, or the x component. And now the next step is we'll cross this out. Uh, I mean, I mean, erase that across this. So now what we have is, uh, now we're gonna have a minus, the middle one is a minus, and we're gonna have two times negative two. That's gonna be negative four. And then four times four, so we're gonna subtract four times four, that's 16. Like that. And this is gonna be j. Like that. Now the next one is plus. So plus, so that means we're going to, I mean, the next one is the k1, so we'll cancel out the k. So just remember this method. So now we go 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2. And then minus negative 4 times 4, that was a minus, becomes a plus, because there's another negative there. 4 times 4 is 16. And this is k uh, vector. All right, so now what this equals to, let's just uh, add it all up. So 8 plus 4 is 12. 12i 12 and then minus, uh, this becomes, well, it's going to be plus. This negative 4 minus 16 is negative 20. Then the negatives become plus. Plus 20j, like that. Next one's going to be plus. Uh, negative 2 plus 16, that's going to be uh, plus 14. 14k, like that. All right, so then this is the normal vector. And we can just box this whole thing out like that. All right, so now that we have the normal vector, and we also have the point P is 1, 3, 2. So yeah, we have a point right here. We, we could uh, uh, pick any point, I believe. It should all work out. But again, we did P, then P, Q, P, R. So we'll use the point P, so 1, 3, 2. So with the point P is 1, 3, 2, and the normal vector N above here, an equation of the, of the plane is, and we'll just write down, remember it's going to be A, which is 12 and then x minus xo, x minus, well, xo is 1, and then we're going to have a plus, and then it's going to be 20, and then y minus yo, that's going to be 3, then plus, uh, this is going to be 14, is c, so that's 14 is c, and then it's going to be z minus zo, that's 2, like that, this equals to 0. All right, so we could uh, stay. We could just uh, stay with this. So that that's our equation of the plane. Do a check mark, or uh, we can continue further and simplify it further. And what I'll do is I'm gonna divide by two on the whole thing, because you'll see there's a twelve, there's a twenty, there's a fourteen. So it's a factor of two, and then we'll get a seven there. So seven should be. I can't divide that anymore by two. So let's go ahead. This is gonna be so. Yeah, this is going to be 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 6, uh, x minus 1, plus 10, y minus 3, plus 7. 
z minus 2 equals to 0. And now we could multiply this inside, get a linear equation, and we could do, uh, yeah, just go multiply it all out. So what we're going to get is, well, let's multiply all this, uh, the variables, so 6x, 10y, 7z. So we'll get a 6x plus 10y plus 7z, 7z, like that. And the next one's going to be, well, 6 times uh, negative 1. That's just going to be negative 6, like this. Yeah, negative 6, and then this is going to be 10 times negative 3. That's going to be negative 30. The next one's 7 times negative 2. That's going to be negative 14. And this equals to uh, 0, like this. All right. And uh, now let's just uh, solve what this would be. Well, um, this is going to be, yeah, right here, this... Uh, this one, I mean, this negative 6, negative 14 is negative 20. So then negative 30, negative 20, that becomes, well, negative 50. This whole thing's for negative 50. Negative 50. All right, so it's negative 50. And now we'll just move it over to this side. So we'll get a plus 50 on the right side. So what we'll get is the linear equation 6x plus 10y plus 7z equals to 50. So there's a linear equation of a plane, more simplified than this equation of the plane, but this is still correct as well. All right, so now going further, uh, let's graph this plane using the GeoGebra 3D graphing calculator. So you can plug that in. So 6x, 10y plus 7z equals 50. And then here's the points 1, 3, 2, 3, negative, six, negative 1, 6, and then r is 5, 2, 0. And also, uh, I did a double check, actually. This was just for my own sake. Uh, so I did plane using their equation PQR, so three points. You just plug that in there, and it automatically solves the plane and the linear equation exactly what we had over here. Just quite remarkable. All right. And then I also did the segments uh, from uh, yeah, this Q to P, R to P, and R to Q, etc. And what we have is this. So there's a plane. I have it. I just shifted it around so that we can see the plane, and we can see the points on. It. There's the uh, P, Q, R right there, which is absolutely fascinating stuff. And, and you can see it's uh, right on the plane. And you can even see that with this, uh, how this uh, shaded area is at the bottom. So it's showing that it's on the plane there. All these are, this, you, you see the circle that's a half light blue, half dark blue. So it's, it's literally crossing the plane uh, or just on the plane. So that's the circles in, right, cut in half there. Epic stuff. All right. I'll just make this actually a bit smaller, maybe. All right. Just leave it like that. All right. It's pretty cool stuff. Anyways, now let's go further and look at example six. In example six, six states, Find the point at which the line with parametric equations x equals 2 plus 3t, y equals negative 4t, and z equals 5 plus t intersects the plane 4x plus 5y minus 2z equals 18. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the solution. So uh, to find this point, so we want a point at which the line has these equations intersects this plane. So in other words, we could just throw these x values, for example, inside here, throw the y inside here, throw the z inside here, and then find, we're going to find a t value, and then we're going to just solve for the x, y, z. So we substitute the expression for x, y, and z from the parametric equations into the equation of the plane. So what we're going to get is, yeah, so we're going to get 4, so that's this 4x plus 5y minus 2z. This is going to be now 2 plus 3t, and then plus 5y, y is going to be negative 4t, and then the next one is z, I mean is it going to be uh, negative 2z, negative 2, and then z is 5 plus t, like that, and then uh, this is going to be equals to 18. Now we're going to solve for the t value. Well, let's uh, multiply this inside, inside, so we're going to get it 4 times 2 is 8, plus 12t, 3 times 4. Then here's going to be minus 20t. And the next one's going to be right here, negative uh, 10, negative 2t equals to 18. So what we get there, and let's see what else we get is, yeah, it's right here. So, uh, so we have this, let's move this everything over to the other side, and then combine all the like terms. So I'll move this over to this side. And this over to there. Now we're going to add up these like terms. So we're going to get a uh, 12 minus 20 minus 2t 
equals to 18 plus 10 and then minus 8. So in other words, we're going to get 18 minus 8 is going to be yeah, it's going to be 10. So we're, for example, this one, we'll just look at this one actually. 10 minus 8 is 2. So then 18 plus 2 is, well, uh, it's going to be, this whole thing's going to equal to 20. Yeah, so that's going to be 20 there. Yeah, so that's 20. And then, then over here, let's just see what we get here. So 12 minus 2 is 10. So, or, uh, or we can just do it over here. So 12 minus 20 is negative 8. And then minus, uh, minus uh, 2 is going to be, this is going to be negative 10. So in other words, we get a negative 10t equals to 20. Solve for t, divide this out. So t is equal to 20 divided by 10, negative 10. That's going to be negative 2. All right, so uh, therefore the point of intersection occurs when the parameter value is t. Uh, t at t equals negative 2. So plugging this value into the parametric equations of a line, we get the point of intersection to be negative 4, 8, and 3. And we can solve that here. So x equals 2 plus 3t. So we get x equals 2 plus 3t equals 2, well, 2 plus uh, 3, negative 2. So this equals to 2 minus 6 equals to negative 4. So this is correct over there. So that's negative 4 there. So the next one is going to be y. y is just uh, equals negative 4t. So y equals to negative 4t, which equals to negative 4, negative 2, which equals to plus 8. Like this. So that's plus 8. That is correct. All right, write this neater. All right. So this is, this is correct. That's an 8 right there. Now the next one is uh, z. Yeah, z is equal to 5 plus t. So equals 5 plus t is equals to 5 minus 2 equals to 3. All right, and that's 3. So that's the points. All right, and uh, continuing further, yeah, we can uh, graph this as always uh, using the GeoGebra 3D graphing calculator. Yeah, I like it. it's pretty uh, epic stuff. You can double check your work and get some more insight. So here's the plane 4x plus 5y minus 2z. Uh, that is this right here, 4x plus 5y minus 2z equals 18. And then what you can do is draw a line. And then here's the line with the uh, initial point 205. And uh, yeah, that starting, the starting one, you could see that from the parametric equations. Uh, there is the 2, and there's the zeros in there, and then there's the 5. Those are the starting ones. And then it has a parallel vector 3, negative 4, and 1. I mean, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a parallel vector right here. 3, negative 4, and 1. And then it gets you this, this uh, uh, vector equation, and it draws it, and there's the uh, plane there. And then you have the point 4, negative 4, 8, and 3, negative 4, 8, and 3. And it shows it across here. So there's the line L. And it intersects this plane. And you can see right at this edge there, this plane there, uh, P is equal to negative 4, 8, 3. So yes, epic, epic stuff. Again, you can uh, click the link and play around with this and see what else you can find.